What's up you guys, it's Jason here from RPM. Today we're gonna to be going over the product and install of our Pro XP clutch fan. This also fits the Turbo R. So this is it, this is the kit. Um, we're gonna put it together real quick via the instructions, get it installed, show you how to install it and go over it a little bit. All right guys, so one of the most annoying things we hear about clutch fans is it's restrictive. I'm just going to clear it up in this video like I do every day online, it seems like. So most fans that guys use are just one size all the way through. Ours is an inch larger. That's to compensate for any restriction that the fan itself may run into. Furthermore, our fan can spin however fast you can spin it. Never, the fan will never fail. So at some point, does the fan become a restriction? Maybe. Maybe guys who are running the Baja at 90 mile an hour and the clutch is just running as fast as it can. I probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't put one of these on your machine. I really would. Desert racers probably wouldn't do it. Guys who are duning, guys who are rock crawling, guys who are trail riding and going slow, any of those guys, you check the box for using a clutch fan. 3000 RPMs seems really low, but if you pay attention to how often you're at 3000 RPMs, it's very often. You're coming up to a trail, slowing down, backing up, turning around, eyeballing the trail, climbing up the rock area, you're duning high RPMs, you stop, crawl, wait for a buddy. Let the machine sit there and run. The clutch is doing its deal. You turn off the machine. If it has key power, if your tail light's on, it's drawing air in and pushing air out. So it's forcing the air out. So it's drawing cold air or cool air into the clutch and pushing it out. So that's kind of how the clutch fan works. I get so annoyed with everyone online. with like, it's restrictive. Is it restrictive? To some point, it's restrictive, yes. Our fan is an inch larger in diameter to help you know, re remedy that restriction that some guys talk about. And uh, that's how we get around that. With that being said, we just got back with our Pro R in Johnson Valley, California for one whole day. We put about 100 miles on there. We ran up to Sand Hollow, did two days in Sand Hollow, and um, maybe 250 miles there, 35 gallons of fuel total. So we were romping on the machine, burning some fuel. Clutch fan the entire time. Our, our Pro R has had a clutch fan on it since day one. This Pro XP has not, but our other one that just got wrecked, it did have a clutch fan on it since day one. Never had a belt failure. I'm not saying we didn't have a belt failure because the clutch fan prevented it. It's just, it helps it run cooler. It helps everything. It just, we didn't have any failures because it's not a thing to worry about. Like, oh, it's a restriction. That's not what's going to cause your belt to fail. Guys are like, oh, I put a clutch fan on it and my belt failed. You tried to climb 90 degrees in high gear. <laughs> you were burning belt up just out of you know, pure stupidity. A clutch fan is not going to prevent that. So that's kind of our whole wrap up on the clutch fan and what they do, how they work, and who can benefit from them. So... That being said, we did have a clutch fan on our Can-Am X3 for 1,600 miles in the Baja. So speaking of Baja and high speeds, we had on the whole time zero belt failures. We did have a uh, clutch roller failure, and we changed the belt when we had the clutch roller failure. But we had 1,600 miles in the Baja, high speed, desert riding, uh, with a clutch fan on it. So no restriction there that caused any issues for us. We do monitor our belt temperatures with uh, Razorbacks, and no negligible differences in belt temperature. We don't see any. Uh, but um, see a lot cooler temperatures in the rock climbing stuff. So there's that for the belt guy. But San Hollow was like the perfect terrain for needing a clutch fan. It was so perfect. So um, let's move on with the install now. You've got the whole uh, sales pitch for guys who are anti-clutch fan. Let's get this thing installed. So you're going to have a short piece of silicone, a tall piece of silicone, and four stainless steel heavy-duty T-bolt clamps and the fan itself. The fan itself piggybacks into the uh, tail light. So you simply just unplug the tail light, plug the tail light in, plug this into the tail light. That's what powers it. So the tail light itself is powering the fan. Um, let's get to it. When you get the stock tube off this machine, cut it. On this machine, it's eight inches. We need to reduce the length of. So we're going to be coming eight inches down. Um, it's actually not a straight cut. It's an angled cut. We had that in our PDF instructions, but I'm about to show you here in just a minute on how to do that. All right, with these loose, these things are kind of a pain to get off. The best bet is just to like twist and pull. The rubber is kind of stiff, but they do come off, so. Uh. Got that one off. Like I said, we're gonna be measuring downward. On this one, it's simply not just eight inches. You need to make an eight inch mark here, here, here. And what you're gonna find out is that it actually cuts at an angle. So a couple random eight inch uh, marks, and then we're gonna cut along that eight inch line.
kind of hard to see because I'm using a Sharpie on some black plastic. But now that I got my dots, I'm going to connect the lines. All right, got my line drawn. I'm going to use a circular cutoff wheel to cut this, and then we'll use a Brillo pad to deburr it. All right, safety first. So put your safety glasses on. All right, safety glasses are on, so let's cut. That's your piece. As you can see, it's not a straight line. That's what we were talking about. From here, just a Brillo pad to clean it up. All right, so the smaller pieces of silicone is facing upward. It'll go up to the box or the bed, and the larger one goes down. What I like to do is, oh, this is all loose still is the, the clamps need to be about, you know, a 16th to an eighth inch above the silicone everywhere. And uh, I like to kind of get them just snug on here first so they don't move around a whole lot. And then I kind of move forward with the install. And what I'll do on this kit is I'll actually install the fan onto the bed just loosely. And then I'll chase the duct, the plastic duct uh, behind it. Uh, makes it for an easy, quick install. All right, so we kind of got everything snug here in place. I like to put this uh, clamp about facing, you know, sideways with the RPM so it can clear the bed or the frame back here. We're going to uh, install it and kind of just gently let it hang. With it hanging there, facing about right there, we will uh, install upward and then inward into there. Everything will be kind of loosely fit and we can start tightening it down. That's there, this one's here, everything's good. We're going to uh, tighten all of our clamps down, make sure this is all straight, I guess. There they go, make sure it's all in line with each other. That looks about right, making sure it's all kind of going this way. Making sure it's straight there. The harness we can leave loose, it'll go up to the uh, brake light here shortly. So let's uh, tighten these uh, clamps down. There's that. Everything's nice, snug, and tight. It's not going anywhere. From here, we're going to be hooking up our clutch fan. We're going to reach up in here, remove the factory plug. We're going to plug it into the piggyback harness. Like so, Get the piggyback harness, plug it into here. And then we're just simply gonna zip tie this wiring up out of the way, onto the frame area, maybe around the frame, wherever you see fit. All right, we're gonna key it on. You're gonna hear that fan pick up some speed and do its little whistly doodles. All right, guys, so that's a wrap on the install. Um, I think we covered a little bit of info on this thing too. You can obviously pick it up at rpmsxs.com. We have these for the Pro XP, Turbo R, Pro R, and Can-Am X3s.